I always hesitate to do an instructional video on something I'm not that competent in. <laughs> Um, but as the old saying goes, what does it take to teach a dog new tricks? And it's more than the dog. So I guess maybe I know more than the dog because I'm getting this question a lot. And um, about if there are any tricks or easy way to take care of these Jaguar screws. Spin smart, all these, U, I call them UFO screws or Jaguar. I've got four in today. Look at them. One of them, there's an unusual story on it. Uh, <laughs> I saw this thing pop up on my Facebook messaging from a Loganville Moms group about a package that was found. And it was, look how it's addressed. Um, not old Loganville Road, but just Loganville Road. And then it was Lo <laughs> Logan View Drive. And then I think it ended up going to Logan Drive. But it found its way to me today. And this one has the same issue going on with it that not only three more shears I got in today to sharpen and this text message I got from Europe where he's having the same problem. So I'm going to go through and show you what I do with the screws on these Jaguar and what I might suggest that you do with them and uh, which might not be the same thing and uh, we're just going to explore them. <laughs> If you have any tricks, if you've been working with these shears, if you have any tricks on how to put these screws together better, let me know. Uh, I've been in the factory and they spent a lot of time with the lower end shears with me. Not a whole lot of time with these higher end screws and, well, just watch me struggle through these today. Alright, so these shears are, this is an older discontinued screw. This is what the new ones look like. So this is this one came in <laughs> with all these other shears. This one is a newer shear. That is the older style screw. If we have to replace it, we have to replace it with this screw. Um, and usually I do replace it. Now this one was sent to me. The little note said that uh, I was having a hard time with the screw and she can't get them sharp. So I'm looking at the edge. There's like nothing on the edge. There is, it looks like she didn't get all the way to the edge here. These are 45 degree angle typically. Um, Jaguar Germany scissors. And I'm going to take them apart. And to take these apart, you really best if you've got this little tool, it says Germany. There's others that look like this, but they're not as pointy here. And this will fit into those holes to take it apart. If you don't have that, you might be able to just get you some tweezers that are pointy and be able to turn it like this. Um, sometimes if you have needle nose pliers, and these aren't needle nose enough, they'll work. And I've had <laughs> one person I talked to that had these the little folding scissors and they point and made the tips pointy and they were able to take them apart with this. Um, I'm going to use this tool because this is the best. And I want you to see how these screws are done because the only thing that holds the adjustment here is the rubber. There's a little rubber gasket like a little rubber donut. Um, that fits around this brass nut. So it's only friction. Let's see if I can get this out. That holds the screw in place. So it doesn't have like a, a lock, clicking lock. So if this rubber is worn and it's not holding, you can replace the rubber, but that's almost impossible to do. Instead, I'm going to replace the whole screw, which I have these here. I'll be replacing. That's what I'll do on this shear today. Now, that sounds, oh, simple enough. Oh, yeah. No, it's not that simple. Because there is a washer on this side that goes underneath the nut, and we'll be replacing that washer. And it's got a rectangle hole, and then it's round on the outside. That one is very difficult to put in the shear. So 
my suggestion, if you can sharpen it without taking this washer out, without replacing it, um, you might be safer. It really should be replaced, but it may stay in there while I sharpen it. Let's see. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to replace it. And um, eventually I'll be able to replace one and show you what all is involved in it. Now this one has a washer on here and typically these washers are going to be really worn and brittle, maybe broken. And um, they're a thicker rubber kind of a bell washer. So I'll be replacing this washer for sure. And maybe that one, we'll see. But I'm going to get in here and sharpen this first. Let you watch me sharpen it. And if you don't have a replacement screw, you don't have the replacement washer, and you come across something with this type of screw, if it has a decent ride line, like this one does, this one, the ride line is pretty much gone. I don't know if you can see that in here, but this one has a decent ride line and it's in better shape. If you can sharpen it without taking it apart, um, you just can't sharpen below that ride line, you can do that. That might be your safest thing to do so that way you don't have to remove that screw and get into all this problem. Um, this one needs a bumper. Oh, that's a joy too. Um, so, I'm the warranty center for these, and you're supposed to, if you have Jaguar, you're supposed to send them to me if you're in the United States, but I realize some of you sharpeners are going to be attempting these, and that's what I just want to kind of give you some heads up on problems you're going to run into. So let's get into these and sharpen them. And what you're seeing me do today, you may run across the same issues with some from shears, because the froms are... Especially the older Froms will have similar screws to what we looked at here. And the screws over the years have changed on these um, Jaguars. And this one's got all kinds of beat up stuff in here. Rod line's completely gone. So I'm working on my rod line. I'm going to turn my stone around. You see how much I've got on this side? It's, sometimes it's good just to turn your stone around. Interesting. That rod line is almost non-existent here, but it's really wide up there. I'm going to work the corner. That way I don't take off too much at the tip. Working the corner and then blending it through. That'll do. I might flip the stone over. That's what's nice about these double sided stones. It starts looking a little rough or grind down or gritty. You can flip it over. Yeah, that feels better. It feels rough, and I keep thinking in my mind it's my stone, but I think it's the shears that feels so rough on here. Um, it just doesn't feel good. I don't know how to describe it. And I think it has to do with all this pitting down in here that I'm feeling. Look at this, t uh, Tony. Tony's here training today. Look at the pitting down in here. Yeah, I see it. So I'm trying to, and then I haven't got my rod line there. I've got it up here. But these had something. I don't know what happened to them. Mm. They're old because I've got an old discontinued screw. There goes her machine. Tony's got a different flat hung machine. She's here practicing today. Actually, you're working on the ISSA certification, aren't That's you? That's correct. And it's more to it than you thought, isn't it? Oh, yeah. She thought she had them. <laughs> and I didn't. And then you didn't. 
it was interesting though you probably learned sometimes it's just a little minor nuance that can make the difference between decent good sharpening and excellent yes I've already set my clamp at 45 degrees because I know that's what it's supposed to be but I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go to something coarser than this because it looked like we're not anywhere near the 45 but we'll find out No. Well, no, it's not at 45. I'm going to do something pretty coarse and then go back to this one. I swear that machine sounds like a lawnmower. Nope, not there yet. I think she just didn't get all the way to the edge when the, uh, the person that the sharpener that had these was working with them. It's a hard steel, so sometimes it takes a little while to get to the edge, and I'm feeling it get warm on my hands. Okay, I've got a burr here down, and I don't have it there, and I can actually see the red. See the little bit of red right here? And that's where we haven't got to the edge. <laughs> Sorry for the noise today. <laughs> All right. Blame Tony back there. We'll make a, I'll make my noise here. Still see red. All right, and this looks really, really rough. So I want to take this on down to the warrant 800. Hopefully I can get the scratches out. I might need something in between, we'll see. I'm not staying at the edge, I'm rocking it at this point. I might be able to buff that out. All right, so now this blade is, you see how it's shaped? It's a little trickier. Because if you're not careful, you'll take too much off of the tip. So you have to easy down to the tip. A little bit of rocking to get a convex And that's getting hot on my fingers. I sprayed alcohol on it, which probably is not a good practice, but we didn't have the water here. That's all right. Alcohol, I don't like to spray it because I can, it's not good to breathe, but, and I can't see the red because it comes off, but I'm there except for the very tip, and I can do the tip with that 800 grit. Just don't use the alcohol on my water stone. <laughs> yeah, right. And this another do as I say, not as I do. Oops. Don't pay attention to what you're doing. You see how I got the tip caught in there and got my finger? <laughs> Watch what you're doing. <laughs> and I was just going to talk about getting dirty wearing light paint. So I was two things. Do as I say, not as I do. Got a nice burr all the way down, even in the back. Little iffy right there at the tippy tip tip. So like I said, I want to be very careful going to that tip. Almost. I think that works. Let me burr right there, but I think I'm, I'm not sure I got a burr right there. Okay, I do have a burr. Burr all the way down. So, now, chasing the burr, going back to this. I need the water bottle. I 
All right, fur is gone. Below my debris line. And you hear Tony over there sliding across the floor <laughs> with that with joint water bottle. I really have more water bottles around here. I'm just too lazy to get up and go get them. All right, so now I want to polish. And then's the fun part, putting these back together. So I'm going to put a little diamond spray on it because i got a lot of scratches to get out. And a little bit more polish. Need to cover up my stone over here. And I don't want to polish over my edge, so I'm going to adjust this, come up about a degree or two. And this looked pretty rough. Oh, it don't look too bad now. Looks a little bevelly. I mean, if I was judging this, I would probably take off a point or two. <laughs> But the bottom line is, do they cut? Will they cut well afterwards? Be careful with that tip. I have a feeling we're going to have a problem with that tip when I put them together. We'll see. Yeah, I'm the sharp. All right, so I'm just, I feel a little burlap behind, so I'm covering it, going over it with a nail buffer. The magic nail buffer, right? Um, Tony? What? The magic the, nail buffer. Yeah, magic nail buffer that will take off the littlest, tiniest burr. Yes. <laughs> and I'm using... How do you describe how much pressure I'm using? See, I'm enough to bend the nail buffer. See, it's bending a little bit. But I'm not, like, pressing down on it. And I'm pressing down back here in the center of it so the nail buffer has a little bit of flex to it. All right, so I'm going to put a total new screw in here. Why? Because I'm pretty sure that rubber has worn out of that old screw, and that old style screw is not available. Now, I can't even see the washers on here. See how they disappeared? Should be two washers. Oh, there's the other one right there. So that washer here, square peg, Goes in the round hole. Gonna put a little bit of oil there. Now, here's my issue. I want to slide this over that peg without popping this washer out because it is a royal pain to put this washer in. So, you see that washer's got like a rectangle hole in it and then it's round on the outside? That, when I put it if I were to put that in here, that'd have to go around that peg. And that's just a pain. And then when I pop it on here, half the time, this washer that's still there will pop off. And then I've got to figure out how to put it back on. And this is where these little tweezers come into play. I think I'm there. Doesn't feel like it though. There we go. I felt it go through. And now this one goes in. And this is a replacement screw for the old style screw. And I'm having trouble getting that in there. <clears throat> Trying to line it up. I know you'll go in. You're just being disagreeable with me. Okay, I think it's starting. And it's just rubber that's holding it. It's just a little piece of rubber and friction that's holding that screw adjusted right. So I'll crank it down pretty far. And it's still not there yet. That's as far as I can crank it, and that's too loose. So I'm going to take this apart again. And I have a thicker washer that I'm going to put on that other side 
and hopefully it'll go together now. Because the washer I took out that I tossed out that I said was pretty worn and brittle, it was a thicker washer than the one I just replaced it with. So I think that's what the issue is. And it's almost as hard to get the screw out as it is to get the screw in. So this washer, you see the difference in that one? It's a great big old thick thing. That's the one that normally goes into the pre-style shears. See, that's a great big old honking washer. And there's a little dainty one. So now, I'm going to put the big old thick washer on here. Put that in the hole. Make sure that slides through. Got to line up that rectangular shape with the rectangular shape here. Otherwise, I'm going to end up pushing that little washer out. Okay, so far so good. Back to putting this in. This has got to be the most boring video watching me put screws and scissors. Should we sing a song or do something like that, Tony, to entertain them? Oh, don't em? want me to sing. <laughs> don't want you to sing? <laughs> no. Did you ever watch that show, um, Here Comes the Brides, with Bobby Sherman? Uh -uh. Oh, you're not old enough. <laughs> oh, man, he was our heartthrob back then. And it was about, it was uh, the prettiest gals you've ever seen are in Seattle. You don't remember that one? No. <laughs> and it was, it was Here Comes the Brides, and it was a bunch of vloggers or something other in Seattle, and they brought a bunch of women out there to marry them. And it was a... It was probably only on TV or one year, one season. I was had a crush on Bobby Sherman. <laughs> so I watched that show. Ah, oh, there we go. We're getting this this tight. Do it a little bit tighter. That was what the deal is, was that washer. So let's cross our fingers. Let's see if it cuts dry. I want to do first cut in case there's any burrs here. So far, I'm not too happy the way that's feeling. The tip does come together. Nail buffer time. Check the adjustment. Maybe a little bit looser. Okay, so this is drum roll, but I don't think it's going to cut. You want to give me some water bottle. I don't think it's going to cut dry even, but I am very pessimistic about this one. I don't think it's going to cut. Nope. Uh. Now earlier the nail buffer fixed that, didn't it? I don't think it will this time. Maybe it's the wrong nail buffer. Mm -hmm. This is our <laughs> Famous nail buffer. Oh, oh, that was the magic nail buffer. Yeah. This one's just not magical, is it? See, it's not great. Do a little wiggling of screw. Ah, okay. Did a good wiggle. Did you see how it loosened up? Now, let's tighten it and try it again. If I do side pressure, I can make it cut. I can't do it without pressure. That's as tight as I can get that screw. See, side pressure, it won't cut. With a little side pressure, it's not, I don't like the way that's cutting at all. See how it cuts hair. I think it cuts hair pretty good. It's pushing. You see that? Oh! I lost my head! <laughs> I lost my head! These shirts are making me lose my head! Sally, Sally, you okay? <laughs> Alright, so my next step would be
I'm going to go back to my 800 grit cushion. I've got my clamp set at 45. I'm going to just go over this one blade and do like a little micro bevel. Cut it off and see if that does it. That's on my cheek. Just pull up another little bit of a burr. I got a little tiny burr. Little micro bevel. There she goes with that machine again. <sighs> so I cut it off. And let's see if that fixed it. You need the water bottle? No, not yet. No, and it acts like the screw is loose. That's as tight as I can get that dang thing. Got a little bit tighter, maybe. That tip cuts pretty good. Oh, it's flipping. Flipping the hair. All right, so I'll try one more thing. I had this set at 45, which is supposed to be the right angle for these. But I'm going to pop it down to, not all the way to 40, but maybe 42. And sometimes a little blunter angle will work. But sometimes it's just get them to cut in some way, some form, some fashion. And these are old shears, like we were looking at it, they were pitted. It may be this is all we can do to them. Told you I thought I was going to have problems with the tip, but not so much. It's just like the whole blade. <laughs> Tony, I think I'm just going to call these good enough because see the tip will cut nice and that's what they use mostly but the whole blade will not cut nice but I've got the tip which is the most important part let's see if it's folding or pushing the hair it's not folding now so what I did is I went back and did like a little micro bevel at between the 45 and the 40 like at a 42 and cut the burr off and that just that's going to be good enough. Now I'm going to double check in that tip, which is kind of pointy. And I'm going to go in and take that sharpness off. There's Tony over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm running the lawnmower. She has a different machine than mine, but it's a flat hone, and I train on any machines. So I'm going to go in and sharpen my other three Jaguars. I'm going to turn the camera off. If I see something interesting in them, I'll turn the camera back on. If I have to replace that little rectangle washer on one of them, I'll let you watch me do that. And if there's something interesting, I'll cover it. I'm assuming these are going to come out fine on the next three. Um, because they're not as old as this one. 